Thanks for watching everybody. The video everyone's been waiting for. How to create more club head speed. There was a, a controversial article that just came out, Mike, that ranked people, people's handicaps by club head speed. And uh, you can definitely see that the better the player, going up from 20 handicaps to tour players to even the elite of the tour players, I mean, if you look at it from a really global wide back right, view, right, sure. the better the player, the faster they're swinging it. So people's inclination to want to swing faster is a lot of truth to it. So today we're going to talk about how to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, so, the, so what we have set up here, guys, this is the thing you guys have seen on the channel a lot, my swing caddy too. And I know what I usually, I usually, if I hit it really, really well, can can get 160 on this thing for a ball speed. So Mike, what we're looking for in this video to, for Be Better Golfers is we're looking for something that'll give people more speed kind of like off the bat that they might not have been considering. Okay. And then something that over the course of maybe like a, a season of golf that they can work on consistently, be it in the gym or, or swinging drills or whatever, that will then give them more long-term benefit. Right, okay. First of all, you gotta understand when I see, and I normally have a launch monitor out here too, and what's interesting about people relative to speed, when you say, I want more speed, my first question is club head speed or ball speed? Yeah. And they go, well, what do you mean they're the same? I say, no, they're not. Because here's what I find with most people. Okay. Most people, whatever their club head speed is with their driver, if you then take that and you analyze it, where they should hit it with that club head speed, what their ball speed should be, it's not even close. So what that means is they don't, they're not efficient with the speed they have. So you want more ball speed, but you want ball speed relative to club head speed. Right. So, so, right. Okay. so, so here's, here's, here's the deal with that. If you get one of these and you take a look at what your club head speed is and what your ball speed, you should have about 1.5. One and a half times your driver club head speed should be into the ball speed. So if you had 100 miles an hour club head speed, you should have around 150 miles an hour ball speed. Okay, most people don't. So the first thing is to maximize. So make sure you're hitting it solid. Make sure you're getting the most out of it. Okay, then it starts to become okay. If you're maxing out what your club head speed is in ball speed, then how do we increase your club head speed, which is the question you asked. But I'm saying more, first, right. most people, if we just give them more club head speed, yeah. they're not gonna hit it further. They're gonna hit it more crooked. More glancing. More glancing. Yeah. So that's the first step is make sure you're hitting it solid. The second step relative to you, so you can go ahead and hit it and we can talk about okay. where speed comes from. All right, that one was not very solid, but it's a good, it's a starting point anyway. Okay. So ball speed there was 147, so well off of what I want to be close to. Probably because, like we said, I didn't well, hit it. So okay, you got, yeah, exactly, because you got 1.36, so you got, so your efficiency was way down. Oh, yeah. So the first thing you want people to get mm -hmm. is efficient with the speed they have, because if you're not efficient with the speed you have, then jumping club head speed is not going to make the ball go further. Right. Right. So what I caution people on is I can give you more club head speed. However, can you hit it solid? Right. Because it's not going to turn into ball speed. Let's try another one. All right, okay, so, so that, that jumped it up to 157 ball speed, and the smash came up to 1.43. So that's that's significantly more efficient. Now the club head speed wasn't any different. Yeah. So your club head speed was exactly the same there, 109. Right, but we had but 11 miles an hour or something more ball speed. Ball speed. Yeah. Well, okay, so it was efficiency. It wasn't more speed. Okay, mm -hmm. so you hit it solid. So the right. first thing is make sure that you're, that those numbers are jiving. Yeah. Okay, now the next thing is it, when you want to create speed in any sport, in anything, if I'm going to throw a baseball, the harder I want to throw it or the faster I want to throw it, the more relaxed I have to get. Sandy Koufax was a great pitcher, and he was a hero of mine back when I was young. That's what I wanted to do was pitch. And he made a comment about throwing a baseball. He says he had an epiphany when he learned how to make the ball go really fast, softly. Mm -hmm. 
So we learn how yeah. to make it go fast with the least amount of effort. Yeah. Okay, so where people go wrong, right, in the, right when they start to try to make the club go faster, is they get tighter. Yeah. So, so to make anything go fast, you, you have to be looser. So when I would tell people, and you, yeah. if I'm standing here and I'm gonna throw a ball at the ground, okay, is I'm gonna throw it harder and harder and create more and more speed, I don't get tighter and tighter. Because if I tightened up, the speed would go down. So speed is not a function of effort or tension. So the biggest thing that people make the mistake on, as soon as they take their driver out and they want to hit it, you can just see everything tightens up. Yeah. Well, see, it should be just the opposite. Mm -hmm. When you talk to Jack about how do you hit it far, Yeah. and I've talked to him a bunch. So Jack, you've always hit it a long way. So if you're going to get up and you're going to just rip one, what do you think about? He says, well, I swing slower and softer. And I go, well, now wait a minute. If you actually swung slower and softer, the ball wouldn't go further. He says, well, I know that. However, I've learned that as soon as I anticipate I want to hit it far, the adrenaline level comes up. So what did I have to think to offset that to keep the sequence right? Because if I get right. up and actually try to hit it hard, I get out ahead of it and I miss hit it. Right. Okay, so the big problem that a lot of people have in creating speed is their concept of speed is more effort or tension. Once you have more tension, you go slower. Muscles move slower when they're tight. I mean, it's just, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So if you want to create more speed, there has to be, there has to be softer muscles and more, less tension. So let's, let's do that now. So should, what would you like to see me do? Uh, should I try to hit it? Should I try to hit it far right now? Or should I just take like a really soupy, like? No, what, what I want you to do is set up to it. Yeah. And we're going to make a practice swing. I want you to take all the tension out of your jaw and your face and just, and then feel how soft your arms are. Get as soft as you can get with your arms. So they swing and they don't feel any tension in your shoulder sockets. And this is the big key. It's not grip pressure as much as the shoulder sockets. See, because if your shoulders tighten up, your shoulder sockets, then your arms can't go faster than your body. They have to. So you got to keep the tension out of your shoulder sockets. This is why people walk up to hit a golf ball and they've got too much club, all right? Yeah. And they go, well, I'm just going to swing easy at this one and just hit it out there. They, and they put it in the hazard. They they're trying in, to lay up and They lay up into right. the hazard. Yeah. But what happened? The tension went out, so the club accelerated. All right, so, so what you just did there was good because you made a swing, you identified not a lot of tension in your shoulder sockets, and then you made more swing and you kept the tension there. So just go ahead and do that. So no matter how fast you swing, the tension level in your shoulders can't change. Yeah, if you had an invisible monitor inside your body that was like effort level or tension level, still should be on like a flat line. So, we'll see in that, you're just about 109, 110 miles an hour club head speed. And, and the tension level is minimal. Yeah. So here's what you're trying to learn how to do. Create the most amount of speed you can with the least amount of tension. The other thing you can do to create speed, when you look at sprinters, any sport, and I, I've worked with a lot of professional athletes, and we're training runners to run fast. What do you do? Well, you have them run downhill. Mm -hmm. Why do you have them run downhill? Well, because now they're going faster than they can actually go. So their body has to figure out how to keep up with all that speed. All right. Yeah. So the best thing for speed is to take one of these sticks and just make it go fast. Now, if you watch that when I do it, and I, I find this interesting when people say that the core is your major speed producer. And I go, really? So if I connect this stick to my shoulders and I try to make it go fast, no matter, it doesn't go very fast. If I hook it to my hips, I mean, no matter, it doesn't go away. If I go here, that's going really fast. Yep. And what did this do? It was stabilizing, giving me these levers to make it go fast. Most people try to make this go fast by, with their bodies. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there's a combination of those two. And in my opinion, we've totally outrun, for most people, the value of their body relative to speed. So for everybody out there, if you want to, if you want to up your club head speed, just take a stick like this and stand there and learn how to make it go fast. 
Uh, see, I'm not, it's not, I'm not doing it. There's not much, there's not much twist going on no. here. Okay, so if, if you can't do that, then doing this yeah. isn't going to necessarily make it go a lot faster. Well, you can just hear that. So just not and make cutting it, the air as much. And make it go fast right here. It's really light. And you make it go fast. There you go. Okay. Now just let your body go with it. Okay, now do the same thing with that. Okay. That feels like a in sync move there. Certainly don't feel like you're fighting yourself. Okay. Well, no, you almost feel like you're, you're standing still is a bad word, but the, now copy the feel you had with your body because it wasn't doing, it was just going with the club. You're creating speed with the club head and your hands and arms. Killed that, Mike. Okay, so, so there's 110, 111 club head speed, 290. Yeah, and we got we jumped the, we got the uh, smash factor up. You got the smash factor up, and the ball speed is, ball is speed more is, than my better one before. Yeah. So okay, so so all of a sudden you felt less body activity. Yeah, and the club's going faster. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about too, because whenever I hear you talk about speed, other people talk about speed. It's this torque and the body's dragging things. When I hear you talk about speed, you talk about the role of the lower body being a a really great like braking system that then other things fire from. And in my own swing, because I do have kind of a soft lead leg yeah. going into it, uh, a la Byron Nelson if, just for, a, for an image for you guys, how can a, a better braking system, how can I develop a better braking system to, that would maybe give me some more speed or consistency? Okay, when you hit a ball, my, my gas pedal, if I want to hit it harder, is not, has nothing to do with back here or what I'm doing here. It has everything to do with when I get right there, this goes, this stabilizes, and as the club's coming down into the ball, this braces and pushes away from the momentum of the club. So my left side is my brace that's pushing away. So the harder I push away from the forward momentum of the club, the faster the club head goes. Unfortunately, that's how I started because baseball, you go here, boom, and then you go. Okay, that's how I played golf for a long time. And then somebody said, no, 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 no. We got to get your knees going like this. Right. And a lot of other things that they did with me ended up losing a lot of club head speed. So what's a good drill for me or for anybody that feels like they're not getting much power from this braking system of the lead side? Okay, take a hold of the club. So the first thing you got to understand, what are you trying to create? What feel? So yeah. if I take your club, we're doing a tug of war here. Okay. So I'm going to start down, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, and you just don't let me pull you off balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, now as I get right here, you feel what you just had to do with your left leg? Yep. Because if you, if you slid on it, what would happen? See, I would, you'd, you'd come off balance. Mm, for sure. So what I just did to you, what I'm doing right here, relax your arms, there's the tour. You yep. feel what your left side feels like? Yep. Okay, that's, that's what you got to have right there. If I stood here and I just kept pulling, you just keep pushing. That's why their head moves back through impact. Yeah. Because they're pushing back away from the forward pull of the club. And that's what straightens their arms out. Everybody else is trying to get up to their left side, clear their hips, walk through. I'm going, what? Right. Walk through. Mm -hmm. For some people that might work, but the biggest majority of people need, if you get forced to go into your right foot, if it goes into your right foot and then goes into your left foot, it's way okay to fall back. Right, right. That's where Nicholas... But most people fall back because they never even got left. Most people yeah. fall back because they go force into their left foot and then force into their right foot. That's no good. Force into your right foot, force into your left foot. Now, once it does that, you can either keep going forward or you can do what Jack did his whole career, which was rock back. And that stable left side is what puts the brakes on the handle and what accelerates the club head. Okay. So you said, how do I create more speed? So we gave you speed. There, there you go. Okay. I got the foot spray on here to try to keep my, get my mind into the center of the face here. Relax the shoulders here, sockets here. So now we're up to 113. 
we're up to 113. We got 138, 186. So if that ball, that ball hit a little toe, a little out of the center. If that ball hits in the center, then your ball speed then is, is way over 160. A real relaxed face. Okay, now what I'm going to tell you to do here, I want you to do the same thing when you yeah. hit this next ball, uh -huh. but I want you to strengthen your left hand grip a little bit. Because okay. your left hand grip is so weak relative to you physically okay. that you're fighting having to feel like you've got to square the face. So I'm going to take this V and I'm going to put it more that way. Yeah, because yeah. when we look at how your joints line up, if you just let your arm, if you bend from your hips mm -hmm. and let your arms just relax in front of you, you see how your arm hangs? Yeah. Okay, if I pull on your arm and you twist your body, that's what your arm wants to do. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be where your grip is so that you don't have to have any tension in your hands to catch the face up. Oh, gotcha. So now go up there, give me a little stronger grip than you had. How's that look? That's perfect. For you, that's right on. Now, now when you let the weight of the club straighten your left arm out, the face is going to square. So instead of losing it a little right and hitting it low, you're probably going to hit this one solid. Don't do anything more than just create the speed now. I don't care where the ball goes. All right. 290. That was hot. That was 114. 114 and 160, 159, 160 ball speed. So, yeah. okay, so when I watch you, and we didn't get a chance to really get into this, uh, again, creating speed means when you create a lot of force, is the club face going to square itself? If speed and the elongation of your arms twist the face out of position, yeah. you're dead. If you're fighting that. Yeah. Then you're fighting that. So what ends up happening is then your arms are trying to do stuff to catch the face up, which puts tension into them. So we didn't even talk about grip, but I'm watching you here for a couple of, or yesterday and today, and relative to you physically, your left hand grip is way too weak. So what that means is if you don't have any tension, the club pulls on your arm, the face is going to come open. Yeah. So then you're, you're anticipating it's going to go over there. So then you try to catch it up, which puts tension in. Okay. And that slows the club down. All right. Now understand, that is not a strong grip for you. That is not strong. Okay. And if you look at the tour right now, in the last 15 years, the mm -hmm. biggest change on tour, and right. I've watched golf swings my entire life and I've studied it since golf started, the biggest change in the last 15 years across the board, stronger left hand grips, a lot stronger, Yeah. more what you would call shut face, and more rotation and not as much lateral motion in their swings. Right, right, right. Not as much slide and more right. of the spanking release. And that you, kind of release. Right. Yeah, we're still okay, cool. So I'm going to relax. Now you can throw the club head through the ball. So now you can use that throwing motion mm -hmm. through the ball. And I'm going to drop my right foot back just a little bit. Keep the shoulders square. There you go. Give myself, my body some room. My arms some room. That's good because the efficiency is going up too. Yeah, but worse, 112, 113. So since we started, I mean, that's a lot for somebody at your level yeah. to jump your club head speed by almost six miles an hour. Right. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay, and we're not doing it by twisting more. We're not doing it by more tension. We're actually going the opposite direction with it. And then getting your grip so that when you swing all that force, when your arm, when your left arm elongates, the club face actually squares itself, allows you to even take more tension out. Yeah, and that one was... Bonus, too, because it was dead straight. All right, but I just wanted that hot ball speed. I don't really care where to go. Okay, so that, how, that, how's that, Mike? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Zippy. Well, we're up to 160, so All right, we're 160. coming up. All right, so we, we, we got it up there. Now, efficiency wasn't quite as if the efficiency, the 112 club head speed again. So see that, in my mind, what you asked me for, we've got. Oh, yeah. You got 112. We went from 106 to 112. Uh, 
that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, your efficiency rate is what's killing your ball speed a little bit. A little your bit, ball yeah. speed would be in the mid 160s if your efficiency rate was up a little more. Yeah, at 112, 112 times 1.5 is closer to 171 or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. That's better. And that's slow. That's better. All right, last one. Okay, where'd your club head speed go? We got 115 club head speed. Um, no, missed, look, missed the center, but well, the, no, no, what did you just yeah. say? 115. 115. Okay, yeah. so now we've gone almost, we've almost added 10, that's 30 yards if you hit. Okay, so just by doing what we just did, uh -huh. you said, how do we add more speed? Right. We've taken you from 106 to 115. Right. In yeah. 10 swings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then as I work on this and catch the face more, then the ball speed will come. Well, yeah, because yeah. you got to go back and forth. Speed, when you challenge yourself with more speed, a lot of times you lose control of the face. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so you back it off until you can do both. What's that level? If you go try to play faster than you control the face, mm -hmm. you might have more club head speed, but you're going to play worse because you're going to hit it sideways. All right, golf course swing here then, Mike. Not going to quite try to kill it so much because... If you can get your peak up, hopefully your average comes up as well, right? Yeah, well now just focus on hitting it solid. Yeah. Don't worry about create speed. Now let's think about hit one solid. So all you're gonna do is put the club face right square on the back of the ball. It's not about speed. Yep. That's solid. Okay. 142, 141, smash fast. So your efficiency came up a little. You still hit it 280. Yeah. Your, your club head speed dropped to 109. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably where you need to play to be able to put both of them together and get the most out of both of them. Because yep. it's about speed and efficiency. And if you just get speed without efficiency, you're, you're, you're really kind of wasting your time. So you're going back and forth. That's why these launch monitors are good now. Yeah. Everybody should have one because then you start to understand what's really happening. I mean, am I hitting it a long way, or am I not hitting it far enough because I don't have enough speed, or if is it because I'm not very efficient? Well, certainly sometimes you'll feel like, man, I just murdered that ball. And then you'll look at the number and you'll be like, oh, that actually went sh way shorter. <laughs> right, well, right. that's because yeah. you hit it fairly solid with a lot of effort. Yeah. So you equate effort into distance. Yeah. See, when I hit it, I don't, I mean, it's like lack of effort. Yep, that makes so it I'm, go So I'm trying to get, let me see what I, I don't even know what I'll do with your stuff. You want your driver real quick? It, yeah. Yeah. Golf course swing or long drive swing here, Mike? No, this is my golf course swing. Okay, good. Here you go. So That's a carry. No, 102, yeah. 147, one. Efficiency rate was pretty high, 102 miles an hour club head speed, and that's my first swing of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can probably, my play speed now is in the 105 to 110 range. Yeah. Can I jump it up above that? Uh -huh. Yes. Could I play there? No. Right, right. Because I can't, Not control, if you hope to find I can't it. control the ball. Yeah. All right. All right, I got to go. Okay, great. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button. Go to molaskagolf.com for more information. See you later. Bye. All right. Thanks, pal. Thank you.